let's create a scratch program based on some pseudocode. Over here we've got some pseudocode and the basic idea behind this pseudocode is that it asks you if you want to input a number so there's obviously a yes and a no and if you want to you say yes there is a number then it asks you to give that number and it checks if that number is the biggest number that's basically what this code is doing so it keeps track it only will record the number that's the biggest so if you give a number that's smaller it won't even do anything with it it'll only do something with the number if it's a bigger number than what it's got recorded and then it will save it and at the end it will display what that bigger number is but it's very polite in asking you if you want to uh, enter number first so that's what the pseudocode is doing so let's basically put this into scratch we're just going to use the little cat icon over there so we're going to use our hat when we run a program so we will use the flag our hat script and first we've got two variables here the first one is initialized to zero and the second one is initialized to a y and I'll explain at the end why it does that okay you get it why why okay so we'll explain why it does it. Okay, so let's create our two variables. So we're going to make a temp variable and the other variable they said is an input variable. So let's make an input variable. There we go. So there's my two variables. Now if we remember correctly, the first one was we must set the temp variable to zero and then we must set the input variable to a y. Now I put it in double quotes but we can just set it like that. So set it to a y. And then let's have a look. Now it does a repeat until the input is a n. So there we go. So let's go to control. We're going to use a repeat until, which is near the bottom. Repeat until. And we want to compare until the input is equal to an n. So it's where the input variable is equal to an n. Okay. So I use that as my condition. Now if you see here, here's the end of repeat. So all of this needs to happen inside that repeat. So the first thing is we need to ask the user for a number and store it in some sort of variable called num. So let's do that. So I'm going to make another variable. Let's call it num. And we need to get input. And that's via send send. So we're going to ask the user for some information. So please enter a number. Or well, Let's double click there. Delete all that. Please, let's be polite. Enter a number. It's always nice to be polite. And just so that we can record that answer and store it somewhere, we're going to store it in that variable which we made now called num. So we're going to put the answer that the user enters into the num variable, which is what they've done there. Asked for the number that's asking the question, and then we store it in num. Then we're going to ask an if statement here. If the number that they have given is greater than the temporary variable that we've got, then we must change temp to num. So that's what it's doing there. So let's have a look. So we're going to use an if statement. So I'm going to come down here. Now there are two if statements. There's the if and the if else. If I just go back to my pseudocode, there's no else part. So therefore it's quite clear that I just need to use the if statement, which I'm going to put inside the repeat because everything is inside the repeat and we check in if the number that they gave is greater than temp so I need my operator I want greater than that's the greater than symbol and I want when the number is greater than the temporary value that is my condition just like that if that is true then we need to change temp to num. Now it might be very tempting to use this over here but remember this is not changing anything. This is simply asking the question are these two things the same and that's a condition. We physically want to change the temp variable to whatever's in the num variable at this moment. So that's a set. So I'm going to set num to the value that is in, or not sorry, not num, I want to set temp to the value that is num. Let's just double check. Set temp to the value that is num. Now you'll notice that is only one statement. That's the only thing that happens on this if statement. This over here has got nothing to do with the if statement. So I must not include this in the if statement. So when I come over here, I don't need to add more stuff here to the if statement. The if statement is done. We need to ask another the user for a yes or no. So we're going to ask them uh, yes or no question. So let's go to sensing. 
we're going to ask another question. Remember, it's not a part of the if statement, so it mustn't go there. It needs to go outside the if statement, but still in the repeat until. And uh, we're going to ask them for, uh, and please enter a Y or N. And we're going to store that, if you look there correctly, not there. Oh, you see my puppies. There are my puppies. Um, if we go back, we're going to store that in the variable called input. So let's go. Um, that's the variable input. So we're going to set input to whatever the answer is. So let's go get the answer. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty much that part. And I think we are done with the repeat loop. So there, everything that happens inside the repeat loop. And then at the end, we display temp. Now they tell us to display it for two seconds. So we're going to display it, and we can display it in any, either using a think or a say. I'm going to use the say. Let me use say it for two seconds. And what are we saying? We're saying the temp variable. Okay. So let's have a look. There we go. And that is our pseudocode converted into a scratch program. So basically, if we run it, if please enter a number. So it asks us for at least one number, so we'll say 45. And you'll notice that temp is set to zero. The moment I put in a number that's higher than temp, it stores that number in temp. Do I want to enter another number? Yes, I do. So I'll put it a Y. Enter another number. Now, if I put a number that's smaller than temp, You'll notice it doesn't actually change temp. Temp stays 45. Num has changed, but not temp. I want to enter number number. Yes. And if I enter a bigger number, you'll notice that temp has now changed. And it will keep doing this until, so let's put in a smaller number again, so it doesn't change temp. We are finished, so I'm going to say N for no. Remembering that scratch is not case sensitive, so we can use a small N. And then it stops, and it tells us whatever is in temp. So out of all the numbers that I in, that gave as input, it only displayed the highest number to me. So that's why we default input to a Y, because we want it only to stop doing the repeat loop when it becomes an N. So we can st we can start it by making it a Y. We could actually make set input to anything as long as it's not an N. Because if it was set to an N, it would not do this repeat. It would jump straight out of the repeat. And the temp, whenever we're trying to find the maximum number, we must set out our variable that's going to store it to a really, really low number, the opposite. So that the moment we find a number that's bigger than it, it will change that variable that's storing the maximum value. And the same thing is if I was finding the smallest number, then I would make that the variable that stores the smallest number, I would set it to a very, very big number. So the moment I find the first number, it will always be smaller than that number. So to recap, you set temp to a nice small number because we're finding the biggest value. So we don't want that number, so we set it to a very small number. And we default input to a Y so that it will always do this repeat at least once. For more videos with Scratch examples and videos on Delphi and stuff that you would probably need if you are going to do grade 11 or 12 or even grade 10 with Scratch um, in RT with the South African CAP syllabus, then go to our channel, subscribe and like and give comments. We'd love to hear feedback from you, what you like, what you don't like for future videos. Also, follow us on Twitter so that we can keep you up to date whenever we release new videos. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.